season. It is a nice Friday, a red Friday, and you are here with JP and Caleb on Chiefs Focus First and Ten. We'd like to welcome you all back and hope you had a great week. <laughs> I had to throw that out there, man. It's been a crazy week, and I just, I'm just i losing my mind right now. Yeah, I was waiting for this game with all the, the idiocies going on right now and the craziness. Mm. Uh, I feel like I'm losing my mind along with a few other people. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway, what uh, what do you think, man? What do you think? Hey, man, well, the Chiefs, they kind of put themselves in the hole. They didn't win that game against the Bengals. So tomorrow is a must-win game if they want to keep the two-seed. Now, if they win that game, what we're going to be end up seeing is that the um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Titans will have to win their game against the Texans or to keep that. So that's going to put more pressure on them. But I think the Chiefs can beat this game against the Broncos. I think they have a really good shot of doing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, they're better quarterback we played last time, and we didn't have our defense that we have right now. And we, we smacked them around pretty good. So I, I don't see us – losing this game in any way and they've got mm-hmm. some they've got right now they've got a lot of anger built up from not just losing that game but also what went on during that game which mm-hmm. i've made a lot of phone calls after that game especially with, i bet you have yes, probably the karen karen <laughs> yeah i was karen the- <laughs> i was being the the quintessential jack off um because i was pissed and no i don't blame you i was pissed too i thought it was ridiculous but yeah yeah and you know uh, it's it's kind of great because there's a guy that uh, started a um, or win probability uh, stat line basically, and he mm-hmm. he bases it off of computer analytics and uh, things of that nature, <clears throat> and he's very spot on. Um, mm-hmm. And there was two games that were at the top of the list this year. Chiefs being the number one game against the Bengals um, mm-hmm. win probability because of referee calls, uh, bad referee calls, I should say. And it was a 60% win probability um, mm-hmm. out of the 10 bad calls. If you just base it off the 10 calls or the 10 penalties mm-hmm. against the chiefs, that tells you six of them were bad or six yeah. of them were, you know, well, they're horrendous when you look at the day. The yeah. But I watched that that's... game over and over again, dude. I mean, mm-hmm. I slowed it down. I sped it up. I stopped it on each frame by frame. Look, man. I mean, there was blatant holds on Cincinnati. They never called. Um, false right starts. Now. Oh, false starts. I mean, the list goes on and on. It was terrible. And then to call us on the petty stuff that they called. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I talked to a guy up in the uh, New York area, I said, hey, mm-hmm. I said, look, I said, and he was waiting for my call. And he actually said, I was waiting on this. And I said, look, man, I said, one of two things happened. I said, you either brought a bunch of refs in that worked at Walmart (laughs) or uh, this, this was way too hyped during the week. And the NFL saw a blowout at the beginning of the game and didn't like it because we were, we're, we're handing it to them at the beginning of the game and they didn't like it. I said it was one of the two things because there was so much hype built up about Mahomes, but you know, versus, versus Burrow, the game of the century, you know, the two best teams, blah, blah, blah. And how much better Burrow is than Mahomes. It was one thing after another. And mm-hmm. it started off with us owning him by two to three touchdowns. And it was 21 to seven at one point. Yeah. And 28, 17 at the half, you would yeah. think that they were able to keep, keep it up and continue exactly. to push through. Exactly. But as we saw, I mean, those calls happen, but sometimes I feel like Andy and them need a wake up call. I'm not saying they get complacent, but sometimes we end up seeing them just kind of stagnant and stuck. Well, we and were on need... the field 12% of the time in the second half. Yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> you also have to make adjustments. And that's something that we saw with the pressers. People echoed the spags. He didn't say much. I think he did agree that that wasn't the best call. You're trying to go for an incomplete pass, stop a field goal. I mean, you're doing with a lot of probabilities. It's football. Nothing's going to be perfect. I mean, if we really looked at it, there are probably many different things going to happen that day. But <clears throat> as I've seen for the future, for the most part, I know that Andy Reid will figure it out and him and Spags, Day Tobe, I think all of them will end up figuring it out at the end of the day and figure and find a way that it's going to help the Chiefs become more successful because they want to win the game. They want to go back to another Super Bowl. They have a really good chance. And they have to do everything in their power to do that because if they don't, man, this season's kind of for a waste. I mean, we start off 
three and four, won eight straight games, just lost a game against the Bengals, and we can finish out the season with, I think, a fourth team straight win against the Broncos. If they can do that, that's quite an impressive resume. But that's where not that's not where real fun begins. The Chiefs need to take care of business in the playoffs. We do not know yet who the Chiefs will be playing. But if it had to be my guess, and we'll get to that probably in the next week's show, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being the Chargers and they put that for like a Monday night game. Yeah, uh, it's 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 weird because there's been so many scenarios thrown out there, and there's you know it's it's kind of strange because <clears throat> it could be one of nine different scenarios for us Mm -hmm. and uh it really just depends on who wins who loses who and and still really this last game Mm -hmm. of the year is going to be a lot of it's going to be dependent on that Um, yeah and the chiefs haven't won they got to win this game in order to keep that two seed and have any chance going into the one seed yeah and i'm just gonna throw some stuff out real quick which is very interesting looking at charles's article our writer la charles c rob i think seven nine seven eight nine he uh, sure. recently put out an article the yesterday about um, he put out an article yesterday kind of about everything that's going on, and he ended up saying that if the Chiefs have a two C, these are the likelihood of their opponents: twenty five percent it could be the Steelers, twenty percent the Chargers, fifty percent the Patriots, twelve point five percent for the Raiders and or Colts. So you can reverse those interchangeably: ten percent for the Bills and five percent for the Ravens. When you're looking at the Bills and the Ravens to play the Chiefs, most is more specific, the Ravens, they need to have a bunch of things go their way positively for the Ravens to get a spot in the playoffs. Because as we saw, they start off hot, 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 and they have went ice cold because Lamar has gotten hurt. But the Chiefs, my, I'm going to be surprised if they play the Steelers or the Chargers, but they have to win this game in order to keep the two seed. If they can do that, we'll figure it out. But at, we're at a point, the Chiefs are at a point now where they have to win this game. And yeah, it's going to be in Denver. It's going to be a 3.30 on a Saturday clock type of game where the Chiefs are going to have to show up and show out. Yeah, you're going to want to win this game, win it convincingly, make sure none of the starters get hurt. Because as we've seen one time when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, Juan Thornhill got hurt that um, last week of the regular season against the Chargers, tore his ACL. We can't have any of those this year. We can't have any more COVID outbreaks. They have to figure it out and be prepared to push forward because they have a chance to possibly go another Super Bowl Granted, if everything works or works out. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they had, and also the, the NFL has, is going to have to do something about the referees because as far as their COVID situation, they're going to have to figure out a way of keeping their referees safe. You can't have a bunch of makeshift referees in the playoffs. You just can't. Uh, that's not going to work out for us. It's not going to work out for any other team for that matter. It seemed like last week, the two teams that had it the worst were, the as far as the two games I should say where the Chiefs Bengals and the Cowboys game was uh had the worst calls uh, oh, for the, sure it was terrible um and of course it cost two teams a game um for the most part uh it's very strange that it went on and, and there, there was not much that could be done about it but we going into the playoffs every team needs to be healthy um yeah everybody you have needs to, to be healthy. if you want to win you don't yeah. want this to be a playoff so who had, excuse me, you don't want the playoffs to be who has the healthiest team or who didn't get hit by COVID the most. I mean, people are going to be, if the Chiefs won a Super Bowl because of that, we already know people be lining up, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. They didn't win these games. COVID won these games for them, and you already know how it is. Yeah, but and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the whole NFL and, all, and the teams are going to have to realize, look, if we're going to have a bunch of makeshift um, referees in, we're going to have to play convincingly, convincingly to yeah. win these games. And mm-hmm. right now – um you know, the Chiefs did a good job in the first half of that game, really on both sides of the ball. Uh, the second half, yeah, they had some iffy schemes and some weird calls, and it just it didn't go our way for the most part. But I don't think that they assumed that the calls were going to go that way either. Most people wouldn't expect that. Um, again, it just it, it's all a situation of how, how is it going to play out for everyone? It's not just the Chiefs. It's not just the Bengals. It's, it's well, I mean, again, it, everybody's a fan. And you have to look at it from that standpoint. You know, referees are fans. And, you know, it, 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 it all boils down to that. Look, people can say what they want about the Patriots. 
but mm-hmm. they're no team to slouch on. Oh, they're and a right good now, team. They could easily come team. in and beat the Chiefs. The, they could come in and beat anybody. Um, yeah, that's true. They could beat anyone. They're no joke. I mean, you know, I had a Patriots fan that's been a really good dude all the way through. We follow each other, and um, he follows our focus page as well. And he said, you know, with our team, he said, or with our quarterback, he says, I can't see mm-hmm. us making us making it past one round in the playoffs. And I said, you're wrong. I said, you actually have a better shot, in my opinion, than the Bills do because you have a better defense, a hell of a lot better coach. I mean, hands down a better coach. And uh, you really, Mac Jones has done a great job. He has done a good job. And he's, he's learning every week, week in and week out. He's done something to impress everyone. Mm -hmm. He stepped up when he's needed to. He's, he's done the right things. He's learned that, you know, if he needs to do the short intermediate passes, that's what he needs to do to win the game. That's Mm -hmm. what he does. If they got to run the ball 32 times straight, They'll run the ball 32 times. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I wouldn't put anything against the Patriots right now because that is a football team that is without, without Tom Brady made it to the playoffs after a year. Okay. I mean, yeah, they had a rough year. They had to rebuild. They had to get their team back together. And after a year they're right. And they almost did it last year. I mean, they still had a decent season last year without Brady. I mean, when you really look at it and they were, they had a, I mean, yeah, they did good. I mean, COVID, but, we knew the Patriots were going to be all right. We we knew all these yeah. teams were still going to be good. It's just if the Chiefs were to play, if the Chiefs were to go in these playoffs and play these teams that they lost to, I guarantee you they would run it back on them and they would beat them. Oh yeah, yeah. Without I fail. think that every time the Chiefs have lost, they got caught on a bad week. Rather, it was penalties, executions, turnovers, and the Chiefs have the most part figured that stuff out. So I'm not really worried from that perspective. I think they can do really well. But when you come to the Denver Broncos, I mean, Drew Locke's not the best quarterback in the world, but they got to remember, guys, they have a really good running back. I think Javante Williams out of North Carolina, really, really good. The Chiefs are going to have to shut him down. I mean, they're going to try to play the spoiler. I mean, it's a division rival unless the Broncos just lay over, which which I doubt they will. I mean, no, they want to win. They want to win. I mean, they want to kind of go out on a high note, and they would love to beat us. But honestly, I mean, it, the Chiefs are going to go in there. They're pissed off. They're fired up. They want to try everything they can to get that one seed back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, really, when it comes down to it, you got the Texans that have already beaten the Titans once this year. And they did beat them when their team was relatively healthy. Yeah. So uh, anyone can be beat any given Sunday. Yeah. And, they, and for some reason, the Texans have always kind of had given them fits. Mm-hmm. So no matter how good or bad they are, they've given them fits. So, that that game, you know, people may be a little surprised at how that game turns out. They know them very well. They know their tendencies, and they know how it's going to play out in the long run. Mm-hmm. So uh, you never know what's going to happen during that game. That's true. We don't know what's going to happen. But we may end up right back in the one seat again. And if we it's do, possible, that's possible, man. You know, um, the way I see it is they just got to win that game. You got to hope and pray the Titans lose to the Texans, and if not, then we end up playing whoever's going to be there for the seventh seed. I mean. And that's kind of how it is. Think about it. In the, mm-hmm. We've played great on the road. We've always been played great on the road. We've got playoff experience. Mahomes has been phenomenal in the playoffs and the Super Bowl, other than last year. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to put the blame on him because it was everybody's mistakes during that game. Oh, um, everyone struggled that game. Yeah, everybody struggled, and a lot of it was injuries and no offensive line. And there were so many variables that played a part in that Super Bowl that. It was just, it's impossible to go in there and, and win. It, it, it just was uh, mm-hmm. with what we had. And I, I'm not going to take anything away from Mahomes because it's just kind of a, a joke to do that uh, to a degree. This year has been, you know, everybody said how terrible we started. I mean, Marcus and the guys, uh, Eric Orfield and all of them, which he's concerned, put out a video um, which I really enjoyed. And I actually talked to Marcus yesterday, but, Mm -hmm. um, and it shows all the progressions through the season of how everybody said the chiefs were done. The defense was trash. Um, you know, Mahomes wasn't good enough. And then Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you see us and we're at the one and two seed at the end of the season. And nobody has turned around and said anything other than, except for Michael Irvin was the only one that actually turned around and said, wow, you guys seem almost unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, we still are. Yeah. Um, Regardless of how people want to look at it, that game last week was not, it wasn't indicative of what we can do. 
I'll put it that way. And they learned a lot. Um, yeah, they, oh, sure they did. I mean, I'm Spags definitely learned a lot. I think a lot of the players did. That you can't just be wishy-washy. You got to play all the way through. Regardless, you have three. Regardless, if you had three possessions in the second half, you got to score. Your defense got to get stops. You got to make adjustments. Dirty Dan is not the typical safety that needs to be over the top. I mean, no. once again, we've been preaching this all season. I don't know why Spags did that when you, especially when you have Juan Thornhill, that's yeah. for that position. I don't know what he has in that understanding. I'm gonna let it be. I mean, we're seeing JP and I think there are some players that should be helped, should get a chance and play because they've shown that their potential not they should they should play, but not only sorry, they should play, but they shouldn't just get a chance whenever they're blown out of team. I mean, we no, got other guys playing, on this team. Yeah, they should be playing a lot more than just when it's, you know, mm-hmm. 36 to three and you want to throw them in to get them some play time. That's not right. They should be yeah, out there. You playing can't just be throwing that. them up for special teams, like, yeah, so. Yep. It's frustrating to see, and I'm hoping that's something they realize and they figure out. But I think when it comes to this game, I mean, it's against Drew Locke. It's against the against the Broncos. I'm not worried, but the Chiefs need to just take it seriously like every other game. You do not want to lose this game because if you lose this game, you do have the potential to possibly play on the road if everything does not go your way. And there's one thing about Andy Reid. You have a chance to get the bye. Andy Reid is phenomenal off of the bye week. I think he's like 20 and three or something to that extent. Yeah. Very, very, very good record. So the Chiefs have to figure out what they're going to do because if they don't, man, it'd be crazy. Now, I would say this it'd be interesting if Mahomes kind of had a Brady like season where he went through the playoffs and beat every single team on the road. I would like to see that, but I don't think it for this Chiefs team it would work out in this sense. I could be wrong, but I think that Chiefs have a really good chance at least hosting a home playoff game. So well, they will if they're number two seed, they still will, but yeah, they host at least one, but I'm talking about yeah. the future. You don't know what's going to happen. They still have a chance, but well, yeah. But- and then there's going to be a season where I, I have no doubt there's going to be a season where they end up in the playoffs and they, and they end up hosting or they end up on the road. The, through the, the through the playoffs, I, mm-hmm. I there's no possibility that that's not going to be a scenario at some point. We're not going to win every AFC championship or AFC West champion. I mean, we mm. I can't say we won. I mean, it's go ahead, sorry. It's possible we could, but um, mm. I, I I don't see that we're going to end up in that position, number one, number two seed for the next ten years. I mean, mm-hmm. it, there's going to be a year. And now, look, if this was our down year, that we needed to get everything back to normal um, with all the adversity that went on in, within the team and on the outside, then mm-hmm. great. Uh, moving forward for the next five or six years, we may be, or 10 years, we may be that team. Yeah. And I we think the be- chiefs have a really good chance to run the division. If we're being honest, yeah. How yeah. the Broncos took a step. Yeah. Have the charters taken a step, but every time we play these teams, we haven't played our full potential. Yeah. So say if the chiefs and say the chiefs hypothetically not winning this game, they will end up most likely playing the Chargers. And if they do that, I am confident because you're coming to Arrowhead in the cold. We haven't seen how Herbert plays in the cold, really. Plus, we're going to have everyone back. Pending, no injuries, and pending, no issues with COVID. So that would be another interesting thing to see. Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of moving parts here. So yeah. as we see, teams are – there may be a team makes the playoffs that we may not see. I mean, there's so many different things. So the Ravens could possibly jump in. Um well, after if a lot of different, night, I can't see it. Huh? I mean, I can't see it after last night. I mean, even last, or was it was the last <clears throat> night's game where they lost to the Rams? Uh, oh, that was oh, I know you're talking. About. They replayed that on Sunday. Oh, that, okay, that, it was okay. Sun, Sunday. Yeah, game, I know you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I've been out of it all week. It's been very good, man. Week, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. They're not in a position that I mean, at eight and eight, um. It's possible. It's lots possible, of fall their way. Man, a lot of stuff's got to fall their way. If they miss the playoffs, okay, look. If they miss the playoffs because Lamar was out for basically it's been three weeks. Mm-hmm. It, well, no, this will be three weeks. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's been about he's missed three games. So Has far. he missed three games? I thought he had missed mm-hmm. two, and then this would be his third. But either way, if they miss it out of 17 games – if they miss the playoffs because of three weeks of him not being on the field, mm-hmm. then that tells you a whole lot about that football team. 
Yeah, I think Lamar is a special player. I think he honestly was carrying that team. But, I mean, you got to have a complete team, and they got to figure out something. Or it tells you that that, that their schedule was front-loaded and it's possible, yeah. we're having issues uh, during – Relying on analytics all the time. Exactly, so, I mean, exactly. You know, if anybody wants to rely on – and they live on stats and PFF, they mm-hmm. really should leave the game of football and never come back because uh, – that is something that you definitely don't want to spend your life relying on. I mean, I've well, seen... they've lost, I think, two games because of that. Yeah. And yeah. they're in a whole different ballpark. And it's possible the Steelers might make the seed. They, the Steelers might make the playoffs. You know how crazy their season has been. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that can happen. The AFC is but... so different than the NFC when it comes mm-hmm. to playoff scenarios and uh, just caliber of players. Uh, the whole – it's just like night and day when you look at the two divisions. Um, it's crazy to look yeah. at the AFC and NFC and think, wow. I mean, look at Russell Wilson, six and I mean, they've won six games all season. Mm-hmm. Um, that right there in its own freaks me out thinking about that because you got really a very elite quarterback in the league for mm-hmm. a lot of years that couldn't win more than six games in a season. Um, granted, it's not just him, but it's crazy to think that his team has kind of fallen down to a degree that mm-hmm. are so far that the, I don't know, mm-hmm. man, it's crazy to look at all of this and think, man, we are, we're struggling. Um, yeah. You know, that, that, that's a struggling team uh, from coaching all the way down to the punter. I mean, they're struggling and I don't know if it's the team just giving up or if it's, you know, which they may have, I don't know. Uh, they've got some high caliber players on that football team from Russell Wilson down to their wide receivers. They've got, mm-hmm. you know, a decent offensive line. Now I say decent. I mean, they're better than they were in the past years. Um, I don't know, man. It's crazy to think of how far that team has dipped, you know, mm-hmm. looking. And then you look at the 49ers that, you know, they have, the, they have been mo- the most wishy washy football team of anybody this year. Mm-hmm. They have. They're up I think downs. the Forty ers are going to peak. I really have a chance. I have a feeling they're going to. They're going to have to peak without Jimmy. And as much as oh I no no, Jimmy's that, done. Trey Lance is your future. Trey Lance is. is the future. Jimmy's done. Jimmy it Jimmy G's done. Insane to think about it because, you know, when he moved over from the Patriots, I remember doing a show, mm-hmm. and everybody said I was out of my mind. I said, "You mark my words. He's going to take you to the playoffs the first year and the Super Bowl the second year." that he's with them mm-hmm. his first year. We took him out. Mm-hmm. If you remember, we actually took him out. Yeah. Used- I'm, yeah. I remember it. Cause he was running. He cut towards a cell and then see Nelson popped him. Yeah. I, yeah. I know exactly. Mom's first touchdown. Exactly. A lot of great moments that game. Exactly. The second year he went to the super bowl against mm-hmm. us. Third year. He played like shit. He just, I don't know why. Hurt. I it's do not know because why he's got all of the wet. Well, you know, they've made it look, we can talk about, tight ends if we want um you look at the tight ends in the league right now and i think if you know you look at how people grade tight ends and they've always got kittle at number two Mm -hmm. always always he is not number two Mm -hmm. and just because he likes to go out and hit people and just because he may make some great catches on when he's on the field doesn't make him a number two tight end we had a chiefs fan who was on the show, I think about a year ago, JP, do you know what I'm talking about? And he was arguing Kittle with you. Yeah. And you, you, you echoed all the same points, but I'm just letting you know, after Kelsey had a game against the Chargers, he relented his statement. So He did? Well, there you go. He then. finally, it took him, what, three years as a Chiefs fan and stuff, but he finally relented his statement. Yeah. I mean, when it re- when you really, it really boils down to everything. It, it It's reliability. It's 100% football IQ, period. Mm-hmm. Um, that's number one. It's football IQ, which Kelsey has over every tight end in this league. Mm-hmm. He has more football IQ than any tight end in this game. Reliability more than any tight end in this game. He missed one game because of COVID, not because of this injury, season, because of COVID this season. Um, when it comes to intelligence, He's got it all because when you think about that position now versus 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. this is not 20 years ago. If George Kittle wants to play that 
that style of tight end position, then honestly, Manny shouldn't be playing because it's not just about going out, hitting people and blocking. Yeah, that's, that's, not, fair. And that's catching, very fair. Catching every once in a while. Now it's you're there to score points, catch footballs, make first downs and block when you need to. It's not mm-hmm. the other way around anymore. And Kelsey has played this game very intelligently. He's learned not to get himself injured, but still block. He's thrown some f- fantastic blocks. We've actually put up video of, of some of the blocks that he's made. Mm-hmm. And it's been, he's been a f- phenomenal blocker his entire career. Mm-hmm. Just because they don't highlight real every single block that he makes because he doesn't launch himself into someone or injure himself doing it mm-hmm. doesn't mean he's a bad blocker. Exactly. Okay. So that gives Kelsey the competitive edge over everyone. When it comes to reliability on the field, Kelsey's number one. I think Mark Andrews is number two. That's yeah. I'm like, our Mark Andrews has proved himself. I think he really, he really has. has. And I, and I think he's Lamar's security blanket, just like, Kelsey is my home security blanket in a way. I mean, exactly. they're just many different things. I mean, they're per Titans are perfect for both those offenses. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy to look at how um people grade somebody because they get hit or they because they throw their body into someone and hit somebody. That doesn't look, you're not a lineman, you're not a blocker, mm-hmm. you're not a you're not you're not a, a linebacker, you are you're not a safety, you, you know, you're 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 out there to catch footballs. You're basically a very large. But all the receiver. positions have changed. They have Every changed. position has changed. It's not. Um, yeah. All the p- positions have changed. I mean, I don't know if you would agree with this statement, JP, but do you think the positions are for just people to understand the game, but in actuality positions really don't mean anything kind of because you have players such as it's not Brandon. Ayuk. you know, that guy for the 49ers who's really good. That wide receiver. Oh, yeah. Um, he can be a perk like a running back. Tyreek Hill, running back, can be a receiver. I mean, yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? They're all hybrid players now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Every, they're looking. You want player that can do anything at any moments of the game. That's what the Chiefs have done. That's what all the other teams. I think the Chiefs have kind of been ahead on that, kind of starting with J.J. Burden and then OGX Factor, Dante yeah. Hall, kind of kind of the pioneers for that. But when you're yeah. looking at it as a whole. I mean, we, even. Um, yeah. Uh, Dexter McCluster was one of those. Yeah. Style oh players, yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. So well, he he, I remember watching the Ole Miss. He was running back, but then when the Chiefs, he was more of a hybrid player. He played wide receiver. I mean, there's many different things. Yeah, special teams. I mean, he did so much, and it's it's crazy to think that these teams stuck with that old style of, and some still do. Weirdly enough, there's teams out there that still mm-hmm. believe in that that old style smash mouth style football, mm-hmm. but. Players are being bred differently now or are, are being taught differently now that it is mm-hmm. a you, you're you're a jack of all trades, I guess, is the you best can do anything, it. basically you can do anything. And, you know, you may be labeled as a wide receiver, but you may be you can be a running back if they need you running back if they need you or vice versa. Um, same with the safety position. You may be a safety and that may be your label, but you may end up being a corner and you know, uh, you could be a hybrid linebacker. Uh, you don't know what that's why people have changed. And, you know, also speed has changed so much with players. Mm-hmm. You know, how many times back in the I mean, I remember when 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 Christian ran that, I think it was a four. I think he ran a four, five, three, forty. Mm. And. I. I asked him, I said, how the hell do you run so fast, dude? I said, for somebody as big as you, how is it that you pick up so much speed? And he made me laugh because he said, all my weight carries momentum. And then once my momentum goes, nobody can stop me. And it just carried the weight carries me like a freight train. That does and not I, surprise I, me. I at said, all. I, I, he made me laugh when he said that that day. And I was dying because I, he said, I'm like a freight train, man. The fat, the more, the more uh, momentum I get going, the faster I get going, you know? And he says, I run downhill every, even if I'm running uphill, I'm running downhill. He said, and I said, yeah, Mm -hmm. that sounds like something, you know, but he, uh, he was so fast. um, Once he got going, yeah, he didn't have that instant burst because he was so big. And there was times that he did have bursts that would scare you because he would make moves that scared you. Oh yeah. um, Players nowadays, they, they all have, so much speed. I mean, Pringle on that return, 
It was the second fastest re- uh, speed clocked with the Chiefs this year. It was 21.945 yeah. miles an hour or something, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal speed, you know, for a player. That is phenomenal. You don't. I and mean, Pringles and Hidden Gym, that Veach was found, was yeah. able to find. Yeah. I mean, the dude has solidified his spot on this team is what he's done. Uh, it, it it's it goes to show you, and like what you said, it, I echo everything you said. Players are so different now, and their roles are more of a hybrid role that they can do so many different things than what they used to be. You know, again, if you were a tight end back in the day, all you did was really block, hit people, and if you and you caught every once in a while to get a first down or whatever the case may be to advance the ball four or five yards, and that was about it. Mm-hmm. You didn't see tight ends get 198. And now, now there's exceptions. You had Tony like Mike Dicka, yeah, Shannon and Sharp, Shannon Sharp, and guys, Tony G. I mean, yeah, that's Tony when the game G. was starting to change, really, with them two. Kind exactly. of exactly. I mean, you did have back in the, I guess, late 60s, early 70s. You had a couple of tight ends that were the main target because of they had a main game. I guess I should put it this way: they had a phenomenal game because maybe the wide receivers were down. Mm-hmm. and they were the main target so they busted through people and caught everything you know it wasn't be- it was yards after the catch more than it was or it was a deep ball because mm-hmm. nobody expected it to be downfield and they caught a deep pass but it wasn't because of yards after the catch like you know tony gonzalez had or travis definitely has or even mark andrews uh and kittle does have yards after the catch i will give him that but um He's not number two. I'm sorry. He's not. There's a reason why the players voted him where they did. Mm. Okay. I mean, Mark Andrews, I believe was voted higher in the top 100 than he was or Mm. uh, in a better position. Um, And there's a reason behind that. Uh, Kelsey was number five in all of the top 100 players for a reason. Mm. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I think Kittle came in. I think 50th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So, and I want to say Mark Andrews was in the forties. I could be wrong. That wouldn't surprise me, but I think Mark Andrews is probably the number two tight end in the league. He's a very, very um, silent killer. Uh, he's very, yeah, he's very, he's uh, yeah, he's very consistent he is. for the most part. Not many people talk about him. No, he's very underrated. So it, it, it goes to show you how people's names really um, depending on how they're talked about. And that goes back to the clickbait stuff. You know, it really all depends on how people are talked about. George Kittle's talked about a lot because of his antics on the field. Okay, so he was brought up a lot. Travis Kelsey was brought up a lot because at the beginning because he was somewhat wild and did a lot of crazy things his first year, second couple of years in the league. And then he just became this phenom tight end that nobody could touch. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's going to be brought up. Mahomes came out of the shoot and, you know, at first he was a one hit wonder. There's no way he's going to do this a second time. It's impossible for him to be this good. Mm-hmm. You know, he threw a no look pass in the Cincy game. It was a perfect no look pass. Mm-hmm. He does this how, weekly. He does it weekly. People, you know, they overlook it now because he does it so often unless they lose. If they lose, then it's, well, Mahomes didn't have to throw that no look pass. You know, yeah, they just they're just nitpicking at that point. That's it. You know, so and in fact, somebody had brought up and we were going to talk about this. We were going to do an earlier show this week, guys, but um, some things came up and we both got kind of tied up and it wasn't easy to do. But somebody had brought up a I think it was on ESPN um, comparisons and there was four other quarterbacks that were better than Mahomes this year. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you knew about that. Um, um, I don't think so. I saw something. Yeah. So Matthew Stafford is better than Mahomes this year, by the okay. way. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, Stafford's a great player, but I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, everyone's well, entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Well, they're stat lining. This is what well, stats doing. don't mean everything at the end of no, the day, too. They're, 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 they're about, if you're really, that's the lat. when you're looking at stats, if you really pay attention to the game, you can look at stats as the last thing on the board when you're really paying attention to an individual player, because a player can have all the stats in the world paper. They call Mm -hmm. them paper champions for a reason. Mm -hmm. 
There's just like teams, they call them paper champions for a reason. You can have great stats, but if you're not really contributing to the win and a quarterback mm-hmm. is your main focal point of contributing to the win, contributing to getting you to a Super Bowl, to getting you to the playoffs, that number one, number two seed, um, then really the stats don't mean shit. I mean, it, it kind of is what it is. So Matthew Stafford, Russell Wilson is better than Mahomes right now. This year, Russell Wilson at six and 10 is better than Mahomes. Now here's his stats though. Okay. This is now these are ESPN and NFL network. Mm-hmm. Both had two different. Now these are two different networks with two different analysts saying the same thing mm-hmm. in different orders. But these are the players that they put above Mahomes this year. Russell Wilson, 2,876 yards, 22 touchdowns, five interceptions. His quarterback rating is 102.5. He's got 2,800 yards mm-hmm. in 16 games. Mm. Okay. This is when I took all these numbers down. Um, Brady. Now, Brady's – I don't know how they really – rank him because maybe it's just his name um his stat line is 40 Mm -hmm. touchdowns 4900 yards and a 100.5 passer rating well that surprised me they've cherry picked a lot of the season but i mean that's neither here or there i mean exactly brady's good brady's done his thing he's done his thing he's gotten away with a whole lot more than everybody else has and they had a the 29th easiest schedule in the league this year Mm -hmm. so it's kind of oh it's front loaded and back loaded exactly so that just look to be honest the nfc south is just kind of like afc east you got one team running it occasionally you're gonna have another team but when brady kind of took over the saints are still kind of competing he hasn't been able to beat drew Brees on one playoff game he hasn't really been able to beat them besides that playoff game but i mean that's just kind of how it goes i mean yeah so then you got aaron Rodgers, which hey look aaron Rodgers, i will say is if you look at the number one, number two quarterback in the league right now, it's Mahomes and Rodgers, period, end of story. They are the two best, most intelligent quarterbacks in football. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers, 3,977 yards, 35 touchdowns, four interceptions, 111.0 uh, passer rating. Mahomes, now this is at ele- this is um, prior to 11. No, this is after last week. So uh, 11 and five is his record. 4,569 yards, 35 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 98.9 passer rating for the season. So what they're basing this on is the passer rating. Mm -hmm. Because when you really look at it, Matthew Stafford had 15 interceptions on his 4,600 yards and 38 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Um, He's at 103. Okay. Which I, I, that when you look at the numbers, I guess I'd have to add him up, but they, it seems like he'd be a little bit lower than that. Brady, 40, 40 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, which he's one behind Mahomes, mm. by the way, on interceptions, and five up on, on touchdowns, um, and 365 yards up on yards. He's at 100. This is the part that threw me off. So he's at 100.5 with five more touchdowns and 400 more yards. And a better Mm -hmm. win, it's tied for wins, but he's got a lower passer rating. Um, And it may be because, which, and less interceptions, which kind of throws me off. I don't know where they get their numbers. Um, Rodgers, 13 and three, 3,900 yards, 35 touchdowns, four interceptions, and he's got 111 passer rating. Okay. Uh, Lamar Jackson this year, just so everybody understands. Uh, out for the, at the time he was out for two weeks, 2,882 yards, 16 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and an 82.3 passer rating. Mm. That's Lamar Jackson prior to his two weeks being out. Okay. What I didn't break down is, and I can tell you, oh, and Baker Mayfield, by the way, uh, wow. Um, 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 83.1 passer rating. That everybody loved Baker Mayfield. Um, Josh He'll be Allen. Good with the Saints. That's all hey, I'm going to say. Josh Allen, Super Bowl favorite. Josh mm-hmm. Allen. Okay. 4,000 yards, 34 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 
one interception ratio, and he has lost, um, I think, in the last seven games, he's lost six of his last seven games, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what I had seen. Um, I'd have to look. Um, mm-hmm. I know it may be one. like three and three, but three and three. Yeah. Maybe that's it, what it was. Four prob- and three. Yeah. I'm not really for sure, but yeah, I think yeah. you're close. He has lost a bunch of games. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, they were teams that he shouldn't have lost to. Now, the Jaguars. I also looked up strength. Of, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I looked up strength of schedule. And out of everyone on this list, the only team that had a stronger strength of schedule than us out of the list of guys quarterbacks on this team was weirdly weirdly enough the lamar jackson yeah they played some tough teams they have played some tough teams i'll give him that yeah so i'm not going to take anything away from lamar because he played some tough teams and they had their struggles this year but when you really look at the strength of schedule with all the other teams that were involved there was three teams that had tough schedules for the most part, whether it be front loaded or back loaded, we had tough schedules, intermediate. Well, most of it was in the, the beginning. And then we had some mixed in all the way through the season where mm-hmm. like green Bay had a very easy schedule for the first two or three games. Then they had a very tough schedule for two or three games and they had a very easy schedule for, you know, so it was like mixed. Yeah. Um, they were kind of similar to us. Then you look at, the Ravens where it was a lot of front loaded, tough games. And then they started losing to when he got hurt, they started losing to teams. They shouldn't have lost to um, people made a big deal about Ryan Tannehill. He's not had the, I mean, he's had a great season against teams that were either struggling or non-existent, but he didn't have a great season moving after that. So he couldn't pick it up when he lost a wide receiver or whatever the case may be. Um, this is Mahomes' worst season yet as a starter, okay? This is his fourth year starting. This is his worst season. His worst season, and he's almost to 5,000 yards and almost, four, I mean, 35 touchdowns. That's his worst season yet. So I don't understand how it is that, and then how do they put Russell Wilson ahead of him? Well, and I, they're not taking the account. Russell Wilson was out for like four, five, three or four games with a finger injury. So I'm he's not out, really for sure two weeks. Well, that, I think he was out two weeks with a finger injury mm-hmm. and came back with the finger injury and played, but he was out for two, mm-hmm. two, two games. Yeah. I think it was. Um, but regardless, they still went six and 10. And if you took Mahomes out of the mix for two games, he still. 3,500 yards minimum. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know how they, they look at stats and stats alone. They're the PFF bunch. All they do is look at stats. They don't look at individual play. They don't look at individual plays. Mm. They look at what do the stat lines say? Mm-hmm. And what does he had to go up against that? They don't look at anything else. And in reality, when you really look at it, and it all boils down to it, from everything, from A to Z, your number one and number two best quarterbacks in the league right now are Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think that's fair. And and I would put Rodgers over over Mahomes. I would too this year. I would definitely put him over Mahomes this year. Um, Simply because of the fact that Mahomes has had a lot of distractions, a lot of changes that Aaron didn't have. Aaron went through it, and look, when Aaron went through all of his changes and all of his issues with mm-hmm. Green Bay for five years, he played like shit. I mean, way worse than Mahomes played with d- distractions. Huh. So uh, it's crazy that they have so much hate. And, and I was talking to a guy on our focus page about it, and he didn't. He said it was so unwarranted, and he just couldn't understand why there was so much hatred floated towards Mahomes. He couldn't mm-hmm. figure it out. And what I started thinking about after the fact is I thought maybe the hatred and the, dis- the, 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 all of it is based not towards him specifically, but towards the outside entities surrounding him. Mm-hmm. And that may be part of the problem because a lot of uh, 
outside entities that surround him have a lot of um, haters. I don't know any other way of saying it. Um, I think that instead of embracing the fact that he's able to withstand and, and still be able to play at a high level with the outside distractions, mm -hmm. they look at him and take it out on him because they may not like his fiance or they may not like his brother or they may not like his mother. Um, and that's really not the way to be. I mean, Aaron Rodgers hasn't talked to his family in 20 years. Yeah, but so, I think he's doing a whole different set of issues. He is. He is. But I think here's the thing. He's dealing with issues that Mahomes – okay, he walked away from the issues that Mahomes is dealing with. And when it all said and done, he said, you know what? I'm not who you want me to be, and I'm not going to be the guy that you want me to be because I am an NFL player. So if you want me to be that person and you're going to do the things you're going to do to try to derail my career, then I'm going to walk away from you. And that's mm -hmm. what he did. And he stayed away from them and he hasn't been around them since. I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. He's got a bad reputation for being arrogant with the press anyway. And I actually, weirdly enough, I listened to a uh, radio show um, when it comes to the MVPs, you know, and how they're voted on is kind of stupid in a way. Um, yeah, I saw that too. I'm like, you know, if you don't like the guy, just focus on the, the football I'm not gonna, play. In I'm that not going to vote for him because he's a jerk to the media. Okay, dude, that is not a reason. Then if that's how you're. Not everyone likes the media. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes so if, the media has dumb questions. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it. Yeah. So if that's how you're going to vote, then you shouldn't be voting. Because you're supposed to be voting on most valuable player to your team. And right now, he is the most valuable player to that team. It's been proven when he's not playing, they can't win. Mm -hmm. So that is a ridiculous statement that that guy made. And he may not be able to vote. They may discount his vote for that. And I hope they do. Because he really, he should win the MVP. I think Aaron Rodgers should win it. Um. It just is what it is. Now, when it all boils down to it, and if Mahomes comes back from all this and somehow wins a Super Bowl, then things should change. But I think, and I, I agree with what you're saying, but I think the Chiefs are at the point. We've already won all these individual awards. It's time for us to win the ultimate award that touches all of us, too, and that's the Super Bowl. Exactly. So we've won one with him and <clears throat> one without him, and uh, we just need to keep climbing, and mm -hmm. I think we can do that. Um, we've been to two straight, and if we go to three straight and win, Ooh. and win, you know, Ooh. and win two out of three, I'm telling you right now, that's a dynasty. That is a if dynasty. That, they if can, they can do that, exactly. And a lot of people, and even in Vegas, seem to think that that's going to happen. Um, I think the think, Chiefs have a good chance. They got to win this game against the Broncos. They got to buckle down. They got to prepare all week. They got to prepare for these games, man. I mean, they got an extra game out to their schedule if they end up having to, excuse me, end up having to play on wild card weekend. Yeah. I still have confidence in them, but you're going you're gonna to run into a dangerous matchup. So. Yeah. I mean, no matter how you look at it, I mean, even though you're playing the seventh seed, doesn't make any difference. You're still playing a team that made it to the playoffs and they want to win. So mm -hmm. you got to, you got to play your hearts out and, I think they have it. The one thing that the Chiefs have that a lot of these teams don't have and haven't had, especially a lot of the individual players, is playoff experience. That's they true. They don't have the coaches with it. They don't have the players with it. That is you know, true. We not only have playoff experience and wins in the playoffs, we also have Super Bowl experience and a win in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So they know what it takes to get there. A lot of these guys don't. Cincinnati definitely doesn't. So, you know, it's like I told that one Cincinnati fan that he argued with me for a minute. And then he agreed after he saw the plays and, you know, he says, well, legitimately, we, we legitimately should be belong in the playoffs. And I said, you should. I said, but just remember, it's a different season with different, different players. This is, they, it's, it's so different than playing the regular season. There, everything has changed. The intensity has changed. The play calls have changed. Everything changes. And it's something that rookies aren't used to most rookies can't handle and most young players that have never made it, or even some older players that have never made it to the Super Bowl or to the, yeah, playoffs. there's a lot of greats that have not made it. 
Exactly. So you get to that point, and if you don't have the poise and the coaching staff to be able to make it, and we're lucky that people can bag on Spags all day long and they can bag on Andy all day long, but those two guys right there have a resume, them two alone, and that, and I'm going to say only them two, um, have the resume to be able to bring us to another Super Bowl. And, yeah. I'll, and I'll say Dave Tobe as well. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody else on our coaching staff, I will say, has got the resume to be able to bring us to where we need to be besides those three guys. And mm-hmm. so far, um, they've proven themselves. Hey, by the way, uh, I want your take on this because I was a little bit frustrated and I mean, it's out in the open, so it doesn't really matter to me if I say it or not. Um, I watched the pressers after the, the post game pressers. And then I watched Thursday's presser and I watched our Mondays and Thursdays. And, you know, uh, I watched the presser with Tobe and Spags and Bienemy. And Bienemy danced around a couple questions like he always does because he doesn't really have the answers to them. Um, And one of the questions, by the way, was does Patrick Mahomes have say on the field as far as calling plays or making, you know, Mm. changes or, you know, audibles, things of that nature. Um, He danced around that answer because he doesn't want to answer. I think Um, that answer would be yes. It's definitely a yes when Andy. He called Wasser's Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's definitely – and Andy Andy already answered that question once prior to this – presser when he came back as calling plays again Mm -hmm. that when he's calling the plays he gives it you know he gives Mahomes freedom to do what he needs to do and and if he sees it he takes that chance the enemy wouldn't answer that question because he doesn't he doesn't want to number one and there's reasons behind that but number two um, he doesn't have an answer for it because when he's in control of the offense uh, he doesn't allow Mahomes to do it Mm -hmm. and that was kind of proven from week two to week six but anyway, regardless, uh, Dave Tobe said something that kind of frustrated me. And I don't know if it's from a personal standpoint or if it's mm-hmm. from a team standpoint. But he was asked how much input he has during the game uh, with the coaching staff. And they said, you know, it's kind of a hit. In fact, the question, they, they said, you know, it's kind of a hidden gem of your knowledge because, you know, of course, number one is probably for good reason, but given the fact that you know so much about the team, but why is it that you don't wear a headset and how much do you have, or no, they said, how much communication do you have with the other coaches? And mm-hmm. he said, well, if you notice, I don't wear a headset during the game and I really don't have any communication with the other coaches. So I don't hear the plays and I don't hear the play calls. And mm-hmm. one of the representatives said, well, do you, are you able to um, communicate with them? And he said, to some degree, I can, if I'm close to them, but um, as far as hearing and speaking through the headset, if I see something, no, I don't. And I was a little frustrated with that because I think with his knowledge, and the fact that he knows every bit about this football team and mm-hmm. he knows Andy so well mm-hmm. compared to, well, I'm going to say it compared to EB. He knows more than EB will ever know about this team and about this football, about football I think period. The hope has been with his team longer. I think. He has, he has. And given the fact that he's, he knows the offense and the defense so well, and he's very humble. Um, compared to others that he should be able to have input of what's going on and maybe some play calls here and there. Now, whether he doesn't want them, I don't know. Or if that's just, I don't believe that Andy would say, no, you can't have a headset. I don't believe Mm -hmm. that. I don't believe Andy wouldn't want his input. Um, Mm -hmm. But what do you think about that? Um, when it comes to when you brought it up, it makes sense. He's never had a head set, and it makes sense now. I would think if he sees something, he would tell Andy. He would tell Spags. Um, now, I don't know really the extent because I know he's a special teams coordinator, so he does a lot of that stuff. So, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting seeing. I mean, I, I see his understanding. 
I have a feeling if he sees something, he'll let he lets them know. But when it comes to other stuff, I think for the most part, he just kind of does what feels at the moment. So it's not really worrying to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a hard question because I feel like there's many things that can happen. It's just he's always done that, though. I'm pretty sure he's always had no head set on. And I don't know why he does that. I mean, that, if that's how he wants to do things, that's cool and all. I feel like maybe a bit more, be more helpful. But, I mean, there's just many different – probably I think there's just many different factors at work here Yeah. than what we think. Well, looking at that presser and watching it, you know, it's funny. I, I, I look forward to listening to what Spags has to say and what Tobe has to say mm-hmm. um, because they spend more time explaining themselves, um, explaining what went on in the field, and it makes sense. Um, I don't, and it's crazy, but I haven't looked forward to anything that EB has to say for a long time. And I know maybe that's, I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't like when people dance around questions and I don't like when, when somebody doesn't really have the answer to something, but they pretend they do. Um, Mm -hmm. that frustrates me and uh, I hear you, man. And he doesn't. So it's, it's just part of the game, and I mean, it happens sometimes. Yeah. A lot of the time, we see. So yeah, I think Eb. I don't know if this will will happen with him this season, but I think it'll work out for the, him and the Chiefs. Where what happens at the end of the day? I mean, yeah, well. he's shown he's able to do some things, and this year hasn't gone the biggest as best as we've seen and people have said. So I mean, it, it'll work out at the end of the day, though. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I mean, you know, maybe it's a learning lesson for him. Um. <laughs> I have, um I hope, you know, wherever he lands um, or whatever goes on with him next year, it will, this will be a learning experience for him mm-hmm. um, moving forward. You would yeah. think that, I guess you would think that some of the prior um, interviews that he had and mm-hmm. was turned down um maybe would have given him an indication of certain things, but apparently mm. it didn't. Yeah. So, um, and for everybody out there for, uh, that wants to, if you're going to think it's a race thing, it has nothing to do with that. Um, that I can promise you. Um, it has nothing to do with him being black, being white, being purple, being green. Um, I've heard way too many people talk about it. They wouldn't care what color he is. Nobody does. It's other factors that played into it that, um, is why he wasn't hired as a head coach. So, uh, I, I mm-hmm. think if he would have changed his interviewing style, I'll put it that way, uh, going into these interviews, he probably would have already had a job. And I think he still has a chance. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. He may. He, may. He, he got a chance, college, here in the NFL, I mean, anything would, anything. It's possible with him. I think he has a really good shot. I just – I don't know how he's going to work with the Chiefs the rest of the time, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't think he's going to um... – And maybe the Chiefs keep him, and if everything get works out, you never know. So I mean, it's, there's, a, there's a, ch- a slim chance of that. Um, winning cares all. Yeah, I guess it just depends on how much you contribute to that winning. And, and, if, and if anything that you've done prior to that, will be uh forgotten i'll just Mm -hmm. put it that way i'll leave it at that forgotten or forgiven just put it that way um what's your score prediction for this game tomorrow um i'm gonna say 33 four no 33 13 chiefs okay all right um that's a pretty good score um i'm gonna say 41 41 to 13. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give him a three point advantage. I'm not going to give him a touchdown though. I am. You don't gonna, think you're not going to give him a touchdown. Uh, I got a weird feeling that the chiefs are pissed and they're going to keep them out of the end zone. Like they did everybody prior to the Bengals. I would not be surprised. They just got to carry that over when it comes to those real teams we face. Yeah. I mean, and they will, I mean, mm-hmm. I think, you know, they, that we faced real teams that we kept out of the end zone prior to the Bengals. So mm-hmm. it wasn't a matter of, Anything other than it was just a really shitty day all the way around. Um, 
there's no other way of saying it it was it was Mm -hmm. it started off really well and things took a a bad turn in the second half or second quarter really it started Mm -hmm. to take kind of a bad turn actually that first touchdown kind of gave me a lot of of an indication of what was going to happen throughout the game and I think the Chiefs as an organization and as a Mm -hmm. as a coaching staff didn't see that coming I wish they would have but um I had a weird feeling something bad was going to happen after that first touchdown with Chase. And I thought, okay, this didn't look good. And then when those calls started coming, I thought, okay. There was an opportunity to handle that, but Spags decided to let Sorensen continue to do what he wanted to do. And that's that's just the result. That's true. They should have the adjustments. There were were times to nip that in the butt, figure it out, adjust, but he did not want to adjust. So, I mean, that's just kind of the issue that they had, the issue that they were, had to be, had to, deal with in that situation and again i i don't know if that was a situation that maybe they thought should we take a chance on having another player out there just to get flags thrown on them or should we just let you know leave it single and Mm -hmm. you know a man coverage situation and and go and uh you know one thing that i can say and it was brought up to me by a couple of people. And then I what when I rewatched the film, you know who didn't play extremely well? I mean, I, I can't say he didn't play extremely well, but he, he didn't play to his full potential. Um, Nick Bolton? Tyron Matthew. Yeah, that's fair. Um, he didn't seem to have his normal intensity. He didn't. And, I'm, I'm, and look, this could be a product of the fact that Thornhill wasn't out there as much or in his yeah. normal position. You need to have Thornhill out there. You need you to. You do. We have seen, and it's been proven, as good as Dirty Dan is in such a certain situations, he needs to be playing that rover. He is not a starter. In this, you've seen, he got literally burnt. He was supposed to be in a spot, I think it was a, I don't, I think it was a cover two zone. Yeah. Wasn't even there. Got beat. So you got to yeah. recognize those things. You got to react. And I yeah, think that's, that's just, part of the problem why Tyron wasn't playing as well because he didn't have I mean, this I normal guy there. You know, I mean, I mean, you it, would think we they went through that issue at the beginning of the season, but yeah, it's just uh, it's just one of those things. Unfortunately, it's very frustrating. Yep. Well, um, we got our predictions out. We will see what happens tomorrow. We're going to do a spaces tomorrow, guys. Hopefully, we can. And um, what about an hour before the game? Yeah, probably about an hour. Hopefully, yeah, okay. if we're able to. Yeah. About if we're an hour. able to do one about an hour before the game, and then we'll try to do one at halftime again. Seems like everybody likes those. And um, we'll do a podcast in the night. Do a podcast afterwards, mm-hmm. and we will talk about what the playoff scenario looks like. And then, you know, maybe we'll try to get one in uh, Sunday after the games. And, you know, if we win, if we get the one seed, we'll mm-hmm. try to do one after the games. If we don't get the one seed, then we can wait until next week and go from there. Mm-hmm. How's that? Yeah, sounds good, man. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate your time. And um, remember to follow and subscribe, www.chiefsfocus.com. It's free. You get everything before everybody else does. And um, you'll get in on all our giveaway stuff and anything else that we've got going on, podcasts, articles, everything else that's going on within the NFL. Sometimes you'll get some rumors in there. So get get to subscribing. We don't spam you. We just give you... um, what we put out and that's it so if you uh would like to subscribe please do so hit that subscribe button and uh follow us on cheese focus and on instagram cheese focus and we will uh talk to you tomorrow sounds good uh just remember code word lightning the, it was just a tweet the pin tweet in our twitter page if you want to enter the giveaway it is there if you guys want to try it out but just remember, code word lightning. If you yeah, guys want to enter out, we're going to pick the winner uh, Monday. Monday. We've got 10th. a few more days, so mm-hmm. uh, give it a shot. I mean, follow the simple little rules that you got on the page, and you can get in. So mm-hmm. uh, with that being said, peace out, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend, and let's go, Chiefs. See you next time, Chase Keenum.